A very good morning to our panel of speakers and participants. Thank you for joining our China-Malaysia Electronics Industry Cooperation Seminar. The seminar today will highlight the significance of the electronics industries in both markets and will feature a panel of speakers including industry experts on cross-border collaborations and investment opportunities. I am Stephanie Tan, Head of Institutional Marketing at Busa Malaysia, and I will be your host for today. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Chen Feida uh, from Gotai Junyuan Security Research Institute. Uh, today I will share the investment view on Chinese-Asia market uh, in three subdivision industries. Uh, smartphone, smart hardware, and uh, semiconductor. Uh, I will explain from the micro perspective. If you want to get more detailed information, such as industry data and uh, related companies information, uh, you can contact us. Contact us later. Uh, first part is about uh, the smartphone. Uh, although the COVID-19 affects the shipment in the short term. But we are still opt optimistic about 5G smartphone uh, replacement uh, as for short term negative efforts. As for the short, short term negative efforts, COVID 19 will greatly reduce the shipment of smartphones. In 2017, global smartphone shipment reached the peak of 1.5 billion with an increase of 1.3% year on year. Since then, global smartphone shipment have begun to decline. Global smartphone shipment in 2019 were 1.4 billion units with 1.3% decrease. As we know, 2020 is the first year of 5G replacement. Uh, if there are, there are no influence of the COVID-19, global smartphone shipment uh, would increase again in 2020. However, due to the COVID-19, the offline sales of the mobile phone of domestic, domestic and overseas market have been greatly affected. The production has also been restricted. According to the data from China Academic of Information and Communication Technology, in January 2020, uh, the total domestic shipment was 20.8 million with a year-on-year -year decrease of 38.9%. Moreover, in February 2020, the total domestic shipment was 6.3 million on the end of the year on year decrease reached 56 in 2019. Huawei increased its smartphone shipment to more than 240 million and for the first time exceeded iPhone, whose shipment was about 100. 98. However, due to the pandemic and the sanction, the expected smartphone segment of Huawei dropped to about 200 million units in 2020. Thus, considering all of the negative effects, we have reversed the global smartphone segment in 2020 with more than 10% decrease compared with 2019. Uh, in the long term, the demand for Mobile phone is just uh, is just uh, surprised by the pandemic in very short period, rather than permanently. We firmly believe believe 5G replacement is a deterministic trend, and 5G will bring smartphones shipment back to grow. Moreover, from the perspective of investment, mobile phone sales growth is no longer the hot spot, and the ASP increasing of the mobile phone industry will be real hot spots for smartphone industry investment. As you've seen from the BOM, the parts with continuous innovation such as RF antennas, cameras, and still value, uh, are still value good trucks. And the mobile phone manufacturer need to upgrade these components to grab the market share in 5G area. Thus, the companies engage in those business with increasing price and growing demand will achieve rapid development in the near future. In the near future, if we focus on a longer term period, the COVID-19 will significantly strengthen the 
competitiveness of China's electronics industry. As we have seen, compared with other emerging markets, China, China is recovering, China's recovering capability in the pandemic period have greatly shown its unique advantages of manufacture. In detail, China controlled the COVID-19 within two months after the lockdown of the city. And up to now, its production capability is fully recovered. In this period, the application of red and green code technology, public health management, such as body temperature measurement, mask wearing, and the coordination of employees are far superior, far superior than the potential competitors, such as Europe and the United States. We think the COVID-19 also pushed the development of digital infrastructure, infrastructure such as cloud service, IoT, remote working system. China is accelerating on development of digital infrastructure, such as 5G, big data center, and IoT, uh, the advantage of infrastructure, infrastructure in the future will be strengthened. Uh, from an uh, investment uh, perspective, we believe the iPhone supply chain will provide uh, plenty of opportunities for investors. Uh, in 2020, uh, Apple will launch 5G mobile phone uh, with stronger innovation, and uh, we are optimistic about uh, the sales of new uh, new iPhone. Uh, iPhone SE2 expand Apple product line and achieve full coverage of of the range of 3,000 yuan to 10,000 yuan for iPhone product. The smart hardware such as AirPods has, has achieved explosive growth of recipient. Owing to the advantage of rapid response, low cost, and the delivery capability, Chinese supplier of electronic components are greatly favored by Apple. By cooperating with Apple, Chinese suppliers have rapidly improved the, their product quality, R&D capability, and the production line management ability, which has successfully created a win-win situation. According to, according to the 20, top 200 supplier list released by Apple in 2019, Chinese suppliers accounted for 20% of Apple's global supplier suppliers and the suppliers number from mainland China and Hong Kong was about 40. The rising number of suppliers is also seen in higher gross margin component space, such as hindsight lens, acceler uh, acoustics, and haptics, rather than just in lower gross margin component space. Component suppliers starting to expand to other components, for example, Issuing from capper connector to acoustics, haptics, wireless charging antennas, AC from acoustics and haptics to hand side lens and camera modules, all film from touch module to camera module, fingerprint module, headline, head side lens, and vehicle lens. Uh, we keep uh, issuing as buy uh, because of uh, new business of Apple Watch Assemble started in. 2020 H2, we believe the business will have a gross margin close to the company's total margin. Uh, total margin. And uh, the higher ASP could support the earning growth. Uh, the company has diversified into wearable market, which enjoys better market demand compared to smartphones, uh, giving us still low and nutrition rate and, uh, con uh, to the end consumers. Uh, the second part, uh, I will talk about uh, smart hardware. Uh, in the area of smart hardware, in the area of smart hardware, China has built a global competitive advantage. In the past days, talking about the consumer electronic industry, everyone's attention uh, was mainly focused on mobile phone. Uh, with the development of 5G in the near future, the attention will gradually shift to smart hardware, such as smart watch, TWS, AR, VR, uh, from 2020, driven by 5G. 
uh, we will enter the area of intelligent IoT with the combination of 5G network and intelligent hardware, uh, com uh, com a complete closed close loop of data reception, data aggregation, data mining, data application will be formed. At present, intelligent hardware pro products have fully have fully penetrated into areas of clothing, food, housing, transportation, education, and medical treatment. According to the IDC data, global wearable device segment reached 172 million units in 2018, driven by the large shipment of TWS. The total intelligent hardware segment increased to 300 five million units in 2019. Uh, the hardware business of Apple is developing rapidly. In Q4 2019, the financial report of Apple showed that the business of, of wearable device reached a revenue of 10 billion US dollars with a year-on-year -year increase of 37 and a quarterly growth of more than 50 for the past two quarters, exceeding people's PC revenue for the first time. Among all the smart hardware, TWS is one of the most popular products. In 20, 2019, Apple launched the second generation of AirPods and the high-end version of AirPod Pro, which has, which has more advanced chip support the Siri voice assistant, the wireless charging, which maintains the larger supplement after launch. In 2019, Apple's supplement was about uh, 50, 58.7 million, but uh, its penetration rate of among iPhone active users is only 10%. 10%. Thus, we, we expect AirPods supplement will reach the 100 million by 2020. By 2020. In the terms of watch, Smartwatch touch, touch human skin and uh, wear, the wearing time is much longer than other wearable devices. Therefore, they can continue, continuously uh, collect uh, human health data and uh, are irreplaceable in wearable health monitoring. In 2018, global segment of smartwatch uh, reached uh, reached. Uh, 45 million units in 2019, the supplement were about, uh, were about uh, 55 million units and uh, maintained the rapid growth, maintained the rapid growth. In the area of the smartphone, supply chain of China has been greatly developed, developed from 20, 2017 to 2019. The number of China, the number of Chinese companies in Apple supply chain uh, was, were, 31, 34, and 40. At the present, uh, Chinese company have the world's largest market share in, in mammoth microphone, PCB, CCM, panels, and ODM. In the new area of intelligent hardware, China has built a global competitive advantage with the improvement, improvement of the tech, technological innovation ecosystem and a strong hardware industry. For example, the initial ODM of the Apple, Apple's AirPods was Taiwan's company. And uh, as time went by, the ODM market share was gradually taken by Li Xun and uh, GoTech uh, to Chinese company. Therefore, Chinese company not only have the ability to manufacture high processing products, but uh, more, important, more important, they also have the strong ability to continuously expand the production capability. Uh, the third part is about semiconductor. Uh, China is a major country of electronic manufacturing and uh, consume, consumes half of the world's, world's semiconductor pro products. But uh, the sale sufficiency rate of semiconductor is less than 10%. For example, China has very huge memory memory consum, 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 consumption, but also all mainstream memory products rely on imports. 
in 2018, the amount of memory import reached 109 billion US dollar. From this perspective, the potential market of semiconductor industry in China is very huge, <coughs> and the ceiling is far from being touched. In addition, due to the due to Sino US technology competition, ZET and Huawei have been sanctioned by by US and the domestic companies have paid more attention to the safety of the industrial chain since then. Uh, thus increasing the percentage of local supply of local supply has become the main task for domestic companies. In this context, the coal companies have increased their support for domestic semiconductor companies and increased the proportion of local procurement to ensure their semiconductor company develop better. Therefore, we firmly believe the coal driving force for the development of China's semiconductor industry is import substitution. Moreover, the Sino-US technology competition and the investment of integrated crude industry funds has greatly accelerated this process. In the process of semiconductor manufacturing, uh, the first generation of FinFET has been mass produced and started to contribute contributors to the revenue in Q4 2019. In 2020, the new FinFET segment will con continue to increase. In addition, Huawei High Silicon have begun to diversify its manufacturing auto source and uh, cheap order to of clean from TSMC will will be moved to SMIC. SMIC. Uh, in the process of equipment, uh, semiconductor in, in equipment, uh, the trend of semiconductor industry shifting, shifting to the mainland and uh, has uh, induced a larger scale capability expansion recently, which, has, which will have uh, obviously influence on the upstream equipment company. Until now, mainland China has become the second largest equipment buyer. In 2020, the new production lines in, in companies like ASMC, Consemi, SMIC, and uh, White YMTC will greatly increase the demand for domestic equipment. By 2021, the capability in mainland China will surpass Taiwan and uh, demand for equipment will exceed uh, 16 billion US dollar, making mainland China the world's largest uh, semiconductor equipment market. Uh, that above is my my point on smartphones, smart hardware, and uh, semiconductors. Chinese companies have built a, a comprehensive com competitive advantage in the field of smartphone and uh, smart hardware. Uh, semiconductor industry is is speeding up to the to achieve import substitution. At present, due to the COVID-19, the stock price of Asia electronic companies have dropped significantly. But we firmly believe this will bring a very good opportunity to take the position for long-term investment funds. Uh, that's all. Thank you for listening. Right. right. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up, we have a presentation by CLSA, led by Ms. Sulin Lim, Head of Malaysia Research, and Mr. Paul Yap, Tech Research Analyst. They will be covering Malaysia's electronics landscape as well as Malaysia's investment opportunities within this space. Sulin, Paul, please go ahead. Hi, good morning, everyone. Sulin here from CLSA. Um, let me just give you a key highlight of the Malaysian E and E industry in Malaysia, as well as and follow, following that, Paul will go on. will go ahead with some details of the E and E and tech companies. So just to kick start, uh, Malaysia's E and E milestone started all the way back in the nineteen seventies. 
thế này Valley of the East. Um, they started right from the uh, from 1972, which I'll run through later in my slides. Apart from that, if you were to go down south to the state of Johor, we have another um, hub where the electronic manufacturing services has a uh, world, world's largest uh, presence there. Um, Dyson came in in 2002, and that kick started the whole fact, uh, the whole industry in Johor back then. Um, for, from in October 2019, the government then set up the China Special Channel to, faci to facilitate a lot more of the FDI applications and approvals. Um, this was part of the efforts to in to increase FDIs in Malaysia from China, and also as part of facilitating the trade diversion issue. And I guess now, with given COVID, it has actually increased the need to diversify in terms of localities um, for some of these companies from China as well, and as well as other countries. Um, so the next part we will look at will be why do we invest in Malaysia, and that will sum up my portion of these slides. Um, next slide, please, Steph. So on, on this particular two charts on this particular page, Man manufacturing forms a, mic, a, a big portion of um, our FDIs. And in 2019, we've seen, we saw a significant increase in the FDI approved from China. In fact, it, it topped the charts in 2019. In terms of export trends, the lower two charts, um, E and E or electric and electric electrics and, and electronics form 32 34% of exports and also of GDP in Malaysia. And export trends for the E and E has actually increased quite significantly. Next slide, please. In this particular slide, we'd like to highlight the four main industrial hubs in or investment hubs in Malaysia. We have Penang, which is known as the E and E in um, E and E hub, followed by Johor, south one of the southern states, uh, which is the hub for electronic manufacturing services. We also have one in Selangor, somewhere near Kuala Lumpur, where we have a, where, where it houses manufacturing, warehousing, logistics, and aer aerospace. And in in East Malaysia. as ports. In the, in the next slide, we'd like to show you the key milestones for the e, &E hub in Penang. So as I mentioned earlier, um, in it, this whole phase started in the 1970s. It all began in 1969 when the government revoked Penang's free port status and from there a vision to set up a free trade zone emerged. In 1972, companies decided to set up factories in this particular free trade zone and this marked the start of Penang's journey as the Silicon Valley of the East. Further into, 19, further into 1970s, we saw a lot more support from new factories uh, in the form of local SMEs and these also start, started to end from here we also started to see a lot of other assembly operations grow. Moving on to the next decade in 1980s, we also saw a lot more of uh, state-of-the-art testing and the companies managed to demonstrate its competence in handling sophisticated testers. And that's when we saw a lot more of the precision testing and testing operations began. In the 1990s, more companies began wafer fabricator company set up as well. Going to the new uh, decade, a uh, new uh, decade in, in 2000, in 2000 there were more op investments and we saw a lot more of medical devices and solar, solar cell operators functioning there. And finally, in, 20, in the 2010s, a lot of factories moved on to high volume and low mix um, operations. And there's a big drive to move up higher into the value chain for high value activities. Just to move back into the 1990s, we saw a lot of the birth of Malaysian companies with links to global MNCs and the list of companies is on the right hand side where we have where we will also, also uh, highlight later during Paul's presentation. Next slide. All right, so this is just a, a summary of the links between the MN MNCs and local suppliers. Again, further details will be explained later. But just for an example, we have the likes of Pentamaster, Vitrox, Globetronics. All of these started in uh, the in the 1990s. tech sector in Malaysia. Next slide. So to, before, I, and before I pass the baton on to Paul, let me also explain what Malaysia has to offer for investments. The country has um, pioneer status, which will allow companies coming into Malaysia for tax exemption within up to 100% of statutory income for five to 10 years. 
In addition to that, there is uh, investment tax allowance and allowances between 60% to 100% for qualified expenditure also incurred during the period of five to 10 years. And um, the formation of a principal hub, basically a locally incorporated company which uses Malaysia as its base for conducting regional or global businesses. And by, by, by allowing this, there will also be further exemptions um, offered to the particular company. Moving on to the next slide and also my last slide. This is this whole set of Malaysia's investment propositions. I won't go through all, but key, key items that stand out will be, number one, we have very strong supportive government policies. Um, there's a, there is relative... There's also intellectual property protection for most of the invest, uh, for most of the industries. In terms of human capital, we have an educated workforce, a multilingual workforce speaking two or more languages, including English and selectively Mandarin. There's also a lot of comprehensive system for vocational and in industrial training, and this will basically breed the next batch of um, higher higher um, technical abilities for the workforce. In terms of infrastructure, Malaysia also offers very, very um, high, well-maintained highways and railways, very well equipped seaports and airports. Most importantly, we have fully developed industrial parks, and this can be found across uh, many states on the western side of Malaysia. And lastly, in terms of the business development, Malaysia is a market-oriented uh, economy uh, with, with the wide use of English, especially in business, um, legal and accounting practices are all based on the British system. And we have a large foreign business community in almost all of the business sectors. I'll stop here and pass the baton to Paul for further details. Yeah. Um, the tech and e &E sector. Hello. Hello. Yes, Paul, we can hear Hello. you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Celine. Good morning, everyone. I'll now go into a bit more detail on some of the companies uh, operating over here in Malaysia and what they can offer. <clears throat> Malaysia brings a complete supply chain uh, with companies involved from IC design all the way through to the final assembly EMS stage. Uh, these companies play important roles in the supply chain for various global MNCs. If you look at Pilang alone, <clears throat> going from the early days of the eight samurais, there are now more than 300 MNCs operating in the state, such as uh, Intel, Lumilets, Osram, Micron, Western Digital, Broadcom, just to name a few. Products produced by these companies range from consumer products, such as handphones, <clears throat> vacuum cleaners, uh, wireless earbuds, uh, to medical equipment, as well as uh, even automotive lighting. Uh, next slide. If we compartmentalize the companies by subsectors. The three biggest ones would be OSET, uh, equipment makers, as well as uh, EMS companies. Seven of the top 10 largest tech companies in Malaysia are from these three subsectors. The two tables on the top show some of the largest listed EMS companies, as well as semiconductor companies over in Malaysia. Malaysia contributes to about 13% of the global backend semiconductor output and uh, two of the top 50 EMS companies also come from Malaysia. If you look at uh, BSI, uh, they are the 23rd largest EMS company in the world and as well as ATA, they are the 30th largest EMS company in the world based on 2018 revenues. Uh, next slide. Over at CLSA, uh, we cover a few of these companies which I will now go into a bit more detail. In the interest of time, I apologize for not being able to run through all of the companies. Uh, I will briefly highlight two OSETs, two equipment makers, as well as one EMS company. If you have further questions, please feel free to reach out to me after the event. Uh, the first company is Inari Amatron, Malaysia's largest listed tech company, and OSET uh, with a market cap of 1.2 billion US dollars. They are one of the largest RF test houses in the world. They have nine manufacturing plants spread across Malaysia, Kunshan in China, and Philippines. Their presence in China and Philippines came from the acquisition of Amatron back in 2013, <clears throat> which also expand their capabilities to the optoelectronics and fiber, optic, fiber optics assembly. 
They offer full turnkey services from design and development, new product introduction qualification, high volume manufacturing, as well as dropship services. Next. Next company is also an OSAC company, Globetronics. Uh, started off in 1990 supporting Intel, uh, which was one of the eight samurai in Penang. Uh, it's grown from its early days of just two employees and now have employed 1,600 people across 10 facilities in Penang as well as Kuala Lumpur. Today, the group specializes in sensors, uh, but also have experience with the backend assembly of quartz crystal timing devices, LED components, as well as generic ICs. Next slide. Moving on to equipment makers, Retrox is a world leading machine vision solutions provider with its, with, it, with its equipment used by top OSAT and EMS companies. It is the number one for 3D inline automated X-ray inspection equipment and also one of the market leaders in 3D automated optical inspection equipment. The group recently shifted to a new campus 2.0 in Batu Kawan uh, which has a build up of 450,000 square feet and it's able to accommodate for a capacity of 1,000 employees. They currently operate four R&D sites and also support sites in 33 countries. They already do a lot of business with China, uh, which is one of their largest market, uh, forming 25% of their 2019 sales. Next. Uh, Pentamaster is a provider of customized automated test equipment and also factory automation solutions. They have deployed 6,000 projects uh, and, and are supported by more than 400 engineers. Their key competencies include mechanical design, smart automation programming, vision AOI, imaging tests, optics photonics tests, and electrical tests. Among others, their equipments are used to test sensors, automotive products, power modules, and RF devices. Uh, they've also recently expanded their operations in Penang to Batu Kawan and now operate two manufacturing facilities there. Um, they, have, <clears throat> they are also listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange uh, and operates offices in Suzhou in China, Singapore, and Sunnyvale in USA. Next. And the last one is uh, BSI, uh, 23rd largest EMS company in the world based on 2018 revenues. Um, they have operations spread across Malaysia, China, and Indonesia, where they have 3 million square foot of built up space. Uh, they have 30 years of experience serving customers from US, Europe, as well as Japan, producing items such as home cleaning appliances, coffee machines, as well as pool cleaners. Uh, they are vertically integrated, um, offering a range of capabilities from plastic injection, printed circuit board assembly, all the way up to final box view assembly of products. And with that, uh, I end my presentation here. I'll stop here. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Suleen and Paul, for the insightful presentation. I would now like to invite Ms. Felicia Ding, General Manager of Bank of China Malaysia, for a case sharing session on China Malaysia's electronic industry cooperation. Ms. Felicia, please proceed. A uh, very good morning to everyone. Um, I think I will uh, represent Bank of China in sharing some of the cases uh, about uh, some of the financial solution for this bilateral investment. Um, first of all, uh, if, if you can have my slide, uh, I will just uh, browse through a little bit about the snapshot of investment in Malaysia. A very quick one. Uh, next slide. Uh, total investment uh, approved in 2019 is about 207 uh, billion, which is equivalent to about US dollar 50 billion. And the major source of uh, FDI for 2019 is actually from US. 
But if we look at the breakdown, uh, manufacturing actually uh, contribute about 82.7 billion. And out of which I think uh, China is actually ranked number one. And next slide. And out of this um, investment uh, for manufacturing, E and E actually uh, is one of the single largest contribution to manufacturing sector, which is about 25.7 billion. And out of this E and E, if we look at the subsectors, I think the, um, the first is actually electronic components. And some of it are consumer electronics, industry electronics, electrical components, and also uh, electrical appliances. Um, I think some of the, uh, these are the sources from uh, Malaysia Investment Development Authority. And some of the encouraged investment in E&E, &E, uh, we look at uh, Industry 4.0, Electronics Manufacturing Ecosystem for Precision Engineering and Oil and Gas, and even some of the research and development initiative um, to improve manufacturing processes, new innovation on value chains, IP protection, and also some design and development activities. Uh, next slide. Um, what, uh, because I think our main focus is how to actually bridge the investment into two countries uh, from Malaysia to China as well as from China to Malaysia. So Bank of China having our presence, uh, one of the largest international bank uh, going out from mainland China. I think our we have actually divide, uh, provide integrated financial services and we can actually put it into three stages uh, with our product and services covering the stages of preliminary or uh, even at the stage of intent, when you have an intent, and also origination, initiation, as well as when the company actually operating in Malaysia. So I think um, one of the largest um, benefit of using Bank of China, one of the cross-border um, bank is um, your information interchange. We have provided platform for information interchange, funding exchange, as well as a convenient to get a financing accommodation. And next slide uh, is um, when you have the pre-investment stage, um, our, we, we can, as a Bank of China, the, our, um, uh, our presence in Malaysia since 1939, uh, we are the president unit for Chinese Association the Chamber of Commerce in Malaysia, where we have 150 members in, uh, from China, Chinese enterprises. So our role here is to provide a one-stop consultancy services to the new investor from China. And also uh, some of our cordial relationship with relevant government offices, as well as agency, we have been organizing um, roadshows um, for for government um, ministry, such as uh, last year, we have been organizing for Ministry of Finance, as well as the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. We have roadshow to and round table meetings to meet up the potential investors. And also we have also entered into a few MOUs to, uh, with our um, Malaysia Investment Development Authority, Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, and even some Halal Industry Development Corporation will organize events to promote some reciprocal trade and utilization, especially um, the currency. You can actually use renminbi very conveniently in Malaysia because Bank of China is the um, appointed onshore and offshore renminbi settlement institution here. And um, beside um, our Chamber of Commerce also we enter into MOU with China Special Channel from Invest KL and some of the, uh, this, this will actually enhance some bilateral investment cooperation. Besides, we have also working very closely with all the Chamber of Commerce, Malaysia China Business Council, professional bodies. We want to provide and value added advisory services to the new potential investor to Malaysia. And next slide. 
some of the um, events that we have organized is um, we will provide some consulting and also even matching services to the company, the potential investor to Malaysia. And since 2014, we have actually established a BOC Global Cross-Border Matchmaking Services for SME. But this is not only limited to SME like what I have mentioned earlier. We have also some roadshow and also some roundtable meeting for corporates to invest into Malaysia. And we have developed this um, called BOC Global Matchmaking System app and which they will also enroll and also pair some of the uh, match those company with uh, relevant business um, um, undertaking so they can actually match each other together. And these are some of the events that we have organized um, in Malaysia itself. Um, there are more than 1000 participants uh, each time. Next slide. Uh, from on origination and initiation stage, and especially uh, for m &A, uh, financing, we can actually provide m &A financing to the acquirer uh, through a SPV company with this uh, equity acquisition um, form. So the, the work, working of this m and financing is actually quite straightforward. Um, with our international and cross-border integration, we will actually provide m and and project financing based on variety of guarantee models. Uh, first of all, we can actually do a cross-border direct guarantee or pledge where we actually can give the loan to the uh, acquirer to, to, to go um, from, for m and financing. And in return, we need to, um, the acquirer will pledge the equity to Bank of China as a form of collateral. And also we can do it through financial guarantee and some of the credit limit splitting. And also uh, in some cases, we acquire some export credit insurance that uh, will, which will cover the, the entire deal of M&A. Um, the, in, uh, the benefit of financial guarantee is that you, you do not need to have a new company set up in Malaysia to look for financial uh, fi financing. So we can actually based on the parent strength and we will grant an M&A financing for the parent for the acquisition. And next slide, there's a case study on financial solution for M&A where an acquirer from China is a 100% acquisition for, uh, for a target company in Malaysia. So what we can provide is um, there are four stages. Um, first of all, our investment bank, they can do the advisory and lead arranger role. Uh, this will assist the acquirer in select target com company. And we will also structure and negotiate terms uh, about this M&A. <clears throat> and during the M&A transaction, our commercial bank, um, um, for instance, Bank of China, Malaysia, we are a full-fledged commercial bank. We can actually formulate M&A financing term sheet uh, from our corporate banking department. And some of the M&A financing, including cross-border remittances, forward uh, contract caging and treasury during the M&A transaction. And post m &A, we will provide some working capital facilities, which is like trade facilities for collection and cash management, and also some syndication. Uh, we can also join lead some syndication from our Hong, BOC Hong Kong platform. And after the financial, um, once the, the target company has grown into a certain size, we can also uh, using our investment bank um, platform to prepare for IPO and to tap on capital market uh, through some allotment of shares. And beside that, uh, for this target company, some of the individual financing facility, we can provide wealth manage management for some uh, staff, from, for some ex expat staff, and even some private banking uh, facilities some payroll facility as well. On our next slide, uh, once we reach the commission and operating stage, uh, this is actually quite straightforward. We can provide supply chain financing for a corporation and for their um, 
uh, what what are the financial services available in Malaysia, including project financing, cash flow financing, and even we can become the agent bank. Uh, some of the corporate, when they invest in Malaysia, they actually came with financing from some policy bank, including Exim Bank in China, and as well as um, China Development Bank. And we, we can become the agent bank in terms of we can actually uh, help to um, uh, prepare the drawdown and also become uh, facilitating all, all the financing requirement here. And for corporate, we can provide some cash management. And also, uh, we have started our first ERP uh, for Chinese company in Malaysia. Some of the payroll services, as I mentioned, and RMB cross-border trade, which uh, whatever facilities that you can get in local currencies, you can also uh, obtain in foreign currency, for instance, US dollar and also RMB. And uh, for raw material purchases, we, we provide all the trade um, trade facility. And for sales side, from, for sales financing, there will be like inward remittances. We have recost re, re, re re, re receivable financing and also non-recost receivable financing, um, especially and also foreign trade currency loan, including for fitting for our sales side. Next slide is actually on AR financing. Um, even though the, the graph may look a little bit uh, complicated, but if we follow the, uh, the numeric number, uh, once the seller, um, once the buyer place an order and the seller can actually use the invoice to do a financing. So um, once the good is delivered, we can just, seller can submit the assigned invoices and we can pre-fund, and this is called pre, uh, uh, pre-payment and also financing proceed can be credited into seller's account. And uh, when the payment become due and we will collect from the buyer and then we will actually do the settlement over our site. And of course, some of the collateral will be, um, some of the mitigating uh, factors for the bank will be, we will set some internal buyer limits and some we will actually require buyers to give us some uh, corporate guarantee. And uh, in some other cases, we can actually get a credit insurance to, 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 to uh, mitigate the payment risk. So this is uh, as long as there is a receivable purchase agreement signed between seller and bank, we can actually provide AR financing uh, for the facility. And um, next slide is actually about global cash management. And this is the management that we want to highlight for uh, invest, potential investor. And using Bank of China as a platform, we can have a two-way sweeping on, on all, almost uh, all the major currency from our counterparty bank in, uh, uh, for instance, our Bank of China, Tokyo, Singapore, Hong Kong office, so we can actually um, sweep, auto sweep, a two way sweeping of uh, from our yen account, Singapore dollar account, Hong Kong dollar account. And also, we can actually provide a manual pooling for all the Southeast Asia country local currency revenue. We can, um, once the customer set a target balance management, we can actually do a fixed timing USC conversion. Uh, into your US account. Um, we will do the balance management based on customer's instruction. And this is also in accordance to the foreign exchange um, policy in Malaysia, where once you fulfill all the foreign exchange policy, you can do a auto sweeping uh, every day. And also next slide. Um, these are some of the, uh, we will sum up some of the global cash management uh, benefit or things that we could do in Malaysia. For instance, we will have a two-way cross-border uh, pooling. We, we will give a cross-border fund sweep up, you know, daily and even sweep back daily. And we will have a zero balance, target balance sweeping. And for overseas local cash 
uh, overseas cash pooling. We will do a uh, overseas local fund straight up daily and also straight back daily, uh, zero balance, target balance stripping. And we will support multiple currency, uh, including local currency and also foreign currency, uh, as well as renminbi. And what we are trying to say here is that um, once um, a company a step up of China or from Malaysia to China, we, we have the platform to provide and tailor make some of the financial solutions uh, for this investment. And we have been doing that for many of the um, companies, um, corporation from China, and some of them are using Malaysia as their regional hub and platform, and we can provide um, tailor-made services to, to facilitate their investment um, in both countries. And I think that, that is my sharing for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Felicia, for the presentation. So our last presentation for today will be from Mr. Zhang Yang, Director of Electronic Information and Software from the Commission of Industry and Information Technology of Guangxi Province. So he will enlighten us on the role of Guangxi Zhong Autonomous Region in China-Malaysia's electronic industry cooperation. His presentation will be conducted in Mandarin. Ken, could you please invite Mr. Zhang?主持人早上好制造业得到了快速的发展智能音箱墨盒以及其他的一些电脑周边产品这是全区电子信息制造业比重为百分之二十四三手机零部件及终端主要分布在北海南宁桂林新州桂港等四产品涉及智能手机功能手机手机精密构件电声器件触摸屏电源适配器数据线蓝牙耳机等这一部分的产值占全区电子信息制造业产值的比重约为百分之十五。四、电子元器件及电子原材料主要分布在北海、贺州、南宁等四。主要产品包括压敏电阻、电路板贴片、印刷电路板、电阻、电杆、电子连接
、桂林、北海、南宁等市。主要产品涉及医疗电子、生化分析仪、手持智能稳定器、家用电器、电子遥控器、电子量具、微型投影仪等。应用电子产值占全区产呃电子信息制造业产值的比重约为百分之八。六、光通信和微波通信设备主要分布在桂林市，网网络通信产值这一部分占全区电子信息制造业产值的比重约为百分之五。七、集成电路。主要分布在南宁、桂林，以封装测试为主。这一部分的产值约占全区电子信息制造业产值的比重约为百分之四。八、电力电子产品主要包括电力自动化设备等一些其他的智能节能电器设备呃系统。产值约占全区电子信息制造业产值的比重为百分之三。九，电子线缆产品主要分布在桂林和南宁，这一部分的产值占全区电子信息制造业产值的比重约为百分之一。十，电池主要是锂离子电池，占全区电子信息制造业产值的比重约为百分之一。十，光伏光。光电光伏产品主要分布在桂林市，主要的产品有智能 LED 照明灯具、电子显示屏、多晶硅电池等。这一部分的产值约占全区电子信息制造业比重 1%。广西下一步的电子制造业的发展方向和重点，一是建设南宁、北海、桂林、柳州。电子信息制造业集群，结合各市的实际，南宁市重点打造网络通讯、智能终端、新型显示、电电子声学、光学产品、新型中高端电子产品的产业集群。北海市积极建设智能终端、新型显示、智能家居、新型元器件、集成电路产业集群，重点发展智能电视。手机、计算机外外设、电力电子等产品。桂林市着力建设光通信、微波通信及智能终端集群，壮大发展医疗电子等智能应用电子产品，同时改造提升光电产业。柳州市发挥汽车产业优势，加快发展车身电子控制关键技术，从。汽车电子制造逐步延伸发展电子元器件、专用集成电路设计制造，完善汽车电子产业链。二是积极打造关键的产业链条，以龙头企业来带动，重点打造七条关键产业链。网络通信设备产业链，重点发展有无线。网络通讯设备、数字机顶盒及五 G 通讯设备等产品，光通信及微波通讯设备产业链，重点发展光传输设备、光网络设备、光无源器件及专用仪器、广播电视发射设备、无线通信传输设备等产品的研发生产。手机零部件及终端产业链，重点依托北海。桂林的一些南宁的一些重点企业发展手机整机、触摸屏、手机精密结构件、电声器件、摄像头、玻璃盖板及其他关键部件。智能家居产业链重点依托北海和梧州的一些企业来发展多媒体音箱、智能数字视听系统。智能控制、智慧家居等产品，智能终端产业链重点依托桂林的一些产品来发展智能医疗电子、手持智能稳定器、电子量具等产品。
依托北海和南宁的一些重点企业，大力发展台式电脑、笔记本电脑、一体机、平板电脑等产品。新型显示产业链重点依托北海、汇科、冠捷、桂林的海威、广西天山等一些企业，发展液晶显示面板、背光板、模组、触摸屏。OLED 显示器、LED 显示器、4K、8K 超高清电视、VR、AR 相关显示器件及产品，汽车电子产业链重点依托联合柳州汽车电子、奈斯特、唐盛科技等龙头企业，重点发展汽油发动机管理系统、车身控制系统、行驶控制系统。自动化变速控制系统等建设汽车电子产业链。以上是我对广西电子信息制造业的一些呃简要的介绍。呃，欢迎大家对于我们广西电子信息制造业提出宝贵意见，也请各位专家嘉宾关注我们，支持和帮助我们来发展产业。谢谢大家，我的发言完了。Thank you, Mr. Chang, for the insightful presentation. I would now like to invite Mr. Pei Huichi, Deputy Director of International Department from the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, to give a few words. Mr. Pei, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, especially, I would like to thank those speakers who gave us a very in-depth, who gave us very in-depth uh, discussions and their insights about the electronic industry in China and Malaysia. Uh, I noticed that up to now we have about uh, 50 participants join in this online seminar, which is high above our expectations, which show that our seminar is uh, very well received by the market participants in both countries. And we are very happy to see some very leading companies, listed companies from Brazil, Malaysia, and Shenzhen Stock Exchange also joining the seminar. Uh, we have talked to a few companies from China, and they have shown their great interest in cross-border information sharing between China and Malaysia. So I think today is the beginning of the collaboration China and Malaysian capital market is just a one little, very, one very small step, but it shows a very pro promising prospect in the future. For Shenzhen Stock Exchange and Bursa Malaysia, we are building an ecosystem um, between Malaysia and China. Uh, we have observed the increasing demand for cross border investment and cross border collaboration through the capital market. So, Bursa Malaysia and Shenzhen Stock Exchange is uh, facilitating this trend. And our, on our side, we want to build an ecosystem in which the market participants, including the listed companies, intermediaries, government entities, can have a very streamlined communication channel which would facilitate the information exchanging and the capital formation cross border. So we are very happy that we had such a successful event for today. And we hope that we, we can get your continuous support uh, for our work at the exchange. And we also have the contact information for all the speakers and participants at listed companies for today's event. And we also welcome, if you would like to have further communication, uh, you can directly communicate through the online the video conferencing system, or you can come to us, we can facilitate your connection and bridging the gap. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. P. 
It's my pleasure now to invite uh, Mr. Matze Oman, Director of Securities Market from Busa, Malaysia, to give his closing remarks. Matze, please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Stephanie. Good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of Busa Malaysia, firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our partners, Shenzhen Stock Exchange, our panel of speakers from both sides, Malaysia and China, as well as the participants who have actually dialed in to listen to this seminar today. Obviously, this seminar marks the beginning of Busa Malaysia's partnership with Shenzhen Stock Exchange to further strengthen our nation's bonds and promote greater cross-border collaborations. China has been Malaysia's tra largest trading partner for the past decade, and this trend, we are with this trend, we are optimistic will continue into the future. The electronics industry has been a significant growth contributor to the region, including Malaysia and China. The remarkable technological innovations have given rise to new digital industries, laying the foundations to the fourth industrial revolution and also the 5G tech capabilities. We have seen in the presentation that a large number of multinational companies have chosen Malaysia as their base. This is a welcome testament of Malaysia's attractiveness as a global manufacturing hub for the electronic sector. With investor-friendly initiatives, human capital strength, a well-equipped infrastructure base, and an established trade-oriented economy, Malaysia is well positioned to attract greater foreign direct investment. We certainly hope we certainly hope that this session has been informative to all participants and we encourage potential collaborations between Malaysian and China, Chinese companies, whether through joint venture partnerships, supply chain integration, and or technology collaborations. We believe the insights shared and relationships formed today will open the door for new opportunities, pave the way for future growth of both countries' industries, as well as promote greater investment flow between the two countries. On that note, I, I end my speech and do thank everyone who has been involved, um, the people that have been tirelessly trying to actually uh, organize for this seminar. For those who actually have signed in, the, the participant, do reach out to the team members in both, either in Busa or Shenzhen Stock Exchange. We do provide the contact details for any information or any collaboration uh, that can be formed by both parties. With that, um, I thank you everyone and have a pleasant day ahead. Thanks. Thank you, Mazi. I think with that, um, this concludes our seminar for today. Thank you again for all speakers, uh, to all speakers and participants for joining in. We will be distributing the slides of today's presentation to all participants. Um, as Mazi mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Ken or myself. Our contact details are presented on the screen. Meanwhile, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.